The idea of a virtual reality is honestly incredibly interesting. And you know that it's incredibly interesting because of like just how many people buy virtual reality headsets. I mean, even I have an Oculus 2 and how much are they, like 300 bucks or something? The thing that interested me a lot more than virtual reality is actual virtual reality. And I know that doesn't make too much sense, but the thing is when you think of something like an Oculus or like some virtual reality game, it's virtual reality, but it's still inside of a game. But what about a headset that like can take what's actually real and change it and or like, you know, build upon it. So uh, the, the closest example and the most recent one, I think, is the Apple Vision Pro, right? It took what's like you actually see in real life and said, hey, we can like put like, you know, uh, a tab in front of you or we can like, you know, show you where to walk with Google Maps. I'm not sure if that's a feature, but it sounds like a like a good one. And I was just wondering, could I make a similar system, but in Roblox, right? Or not like even in Roblox, but like honestly, any game engine, like is it possible to make a system? Or we know it's possible, right? Nothing is impossible. But how easy would it be to make almost this virtual reality quote unquote headset that like you can you know toggle with like a key bind that basically changes the way that you perceive the game so my plan for this is very simple okay like i said i want to have a toggle where i can press a key and then we can maybe have like some headset like black outline around the screen you know to indicate that we're wearing the headset you know you know maybe play some sound or whatever i want to actually change the way that you know this world looks um, be that, you know, by changing its color or maybe, I don't know, changing like the brightness or whatever. And then as a final thing, I want to actually add like parts or whatever that you can only see and interact with if you have the VR headset. So yeah, I think that'd be a fun challenge to, you know, try out and see if I could do it. And if I am able to script it, which I probably am because I'm just that good, of course, then this also will serve as a tutorial to those who might not even be scripting yet, right? But hopefully if I interest you, um, you might go and try that out. So let's start off with, I think, the simplest thing, which is to have an outline around the screen, okay? This is what we call user interface. It's like a 2D image in an otherwise 3D world, right? The way you get this is you make a screen GUI. GUI stands for graphical user interface. And inside of that, we will add an image label, okay? This image label is a square right now. Obviously, that's probably not what we want. If we want it to be an outline around the screen, we probably want it to fit the whole screen. And the way you do this is you just click on size, enter one, and type in enter. And right now it's obviously asking us for an image, right? Now if you have an outline image, you know, that you could use, fair enough. But what I did is I just went to the toolbox and images, and I think I looked it up already. Yeah, black outline, and then you should get one like this. You right click, copy asset ID, and then somewhere in here you find the actual image ID, copy it in, and there we go. And after setting the background to be invisible, well, there we go. Now it looks, it's a little wide, you know, we probably could have used something that's a little thin, maybe like this, let's see how this looks. Uh, I mean, personally, it's a bit too thin, I think I'll stay with the old one, but again, you can, you know, pick between these two or even make your own one. Now, a quick thing as well is that if I actually go and play the game right now, uh, this happens, okay? So as you can see, it's like leaving room for the buttons, which we probably don't want. This looks very bad. So a quick fix that I would add is clicking on the screen GUI. And again, this is only for if you're actually developing along with me. You make sure that ignore GUI inset is set to true. And I guess while we're at it, just make sure that reset on spawn is equal to false. And yeah, so now whenever I go and play the game, it's going to cover the full screen. Yeah, there we go. And so the next thing I'm thinking is to actually add a color difference to change basically like to add a filter to the map, to change how the colors, you know, look, to change the saturation, the contrast, brightness, all of that. And wow, what a surprise, the game has an item for exactly this purpose. This is called a color correction, and would you look at that, it has literally all of those things. Wow, what a coincidence, right? Brightness, contrast, saturation, and also the tint color, which is basically like, it adds a little filter to change the colors. So when it's fully white, there's no filter, and then if it's like dark, there's a black filter, and then if it's like, you know, green or red or whatever, it has that filter on. So what I'm thinking we can do, and this is a color combination which I've experimented with before, and this is what I found to work the best. It's gonna be this magenta pinkish color with a contrast that's gonna be set very close to one. This is your preference, but I personally like it to be like around here. 
saturation could be, again, wherever you want. I'll just place it over here. And then brightness is also up to you. I'll do 0.1. And yeah, so this just creates this nice looking, almost like synth wave effect. I don't even know if that's the right terminology, but you know what I mean. Like, it looks very cool. And I think that this is a very good ambiance to have for like a VR headset. And now we need to find a way to actually toggle these, okay? So I, I don't want the player to start out with this. I want the player to start out normally, you know, regularly. And then when they like press some key or whatever, I want you to be able to toggle between VR. So by default, I want this color correction, which I'll actually just call VR color to be disabled. Okay, so by default, it's going to be disabled. This is a very <laughs> nice, this is a very convenient property. So I'll thank Roblox for adding this. And then I'll click on the image label, which I guess I'll just <laughs> keep named the same. And then set its visible property equal to false. So yeah, and so now all we really need to do is just make a script that detects, okay, when the player presses the key, we need to change those properties, right? And so I've actually off camera did this already. I'll quickly just go through what this script is actually doing for those curious, but I just didn't want to, you know, make and write the whole script because I felt like that'd be a bit boring. Basically, we have a variable that is meant to track whether the player is in VR or not. By default, it's at false because I don't want the player to be in VR. Here we're going to have functions which we will call this one when we want VR to turn on and this one when we want it to turn off. And then this just basically detects like, okay, whenever the input begins, um, if the input is R, like on a keyboard R, we're going to basically toggle this is VR variable. So if it's false, we're going to set it to true. And if it's true, then we're going to set it to false. Then we check, you know, whether it's true or false and then call the appropriate function. And so what we need to do right now is we need to access both this color correction and this image. So for this one, we can say local uh, VR outline, I guess is going to be equal to the image label, right? So basically, the reason I say player GUI, so, you know, we get our player, our local player, and I say player GUI and not starter GUI because the way that this works, just quick trivia, is that anything inside of starter GUI gets copied and pasted into the player GUI item of every single player who joins the game, right? That's why I'm saying player GUI and not starter GUI. You get the point. But we don't have to do the same for the color. So the, so the color will be in lighting. So all we got to do is just say local VR color. Uh, I'm not sure if starting all of these with VR is a good idea, but whatever. It's going to be equal to came dot lighting wait for child VR color. And so in these functions, we just need to, you know, change their properties. So here I can say VR outline dot visible is equal to true, right? Because, you know, VR is on. But then if we are off, then we're going to set visible to false. And then same thing here, VR color dot enabled is equal to true or it's equal to false. And so if I play the game right now, if I press R, there we go. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that looks already very VR like, right? I mean, not really, I guess, because anyone who has VR knows that it doesn't look like this, but like, look, we're getting there, okay? This, let's just pretend this is a VR headset. So then the very next thing I want to do is to change up the way that the environment looks. And there's many different ways to go about this. For example, you could maybe change the way that the spawn location looks, right? You could change how the base plate looks, which is what I'm going to do. You could even change how like the sky looks. You can change the sky box, which, you know, I'm not going to do in this video, but you could do that. You could do everything I've just said and, you know, everything that I'm going to do in this video. But for now, let's just change how the base plate works. In case you don't know, somehow, the base plate is this thing. It's this big gray box that we are all standing on, right? And so what I'm thinking we can do is when the player enables the VR, we'll, first of all, we'll take this texture of the base plate and then we'll set its transparency to one, meaning it's fully invisible. We'll change the color of the base plate to be green and then we'll change its material to be that of grass. And so let's actually get the variable for the base plate. So local base plate is equal to workspace wait for child base plate. And I guess we could do the same for base plate texture. So base texture is equal to base plate wait for child texture like so. This isn't required, I guess, but I just like using variables. And yeah, and so now it's just a game of, you know, changing the properties and then setting them back to be normal.
And there we go, that's done. So I'm just looping through all of the parts, changing the transparency, changing their collision, and you know, again, doing the same thing but in reverse. And so if I hop in right now, if I look around, we don't see anything, right? But if I turn on the VR, look at that. And I can actually walk on them. And then they disappear. That's so cool. But you can see like the applications that this promises, right? Like this is literally a second world in an already existing world. And honestly, just for fun, what we could do is we could just make another folder, okay? And then, you know, we can just, you know, take those parts, but then make them actually normal. And then we could name this folder normal parts, like so. And so I assume your understanding now is that these parts will be normal, meaning that we can actually see them normally. But then when VR is on, that's when we phase them out of existence. All right, and so doing the same loop, but just in reverse of what we did for the VR parts. If I go in again right now, look at that. It's almost like they're teleporting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> this is so cool. Yeah, it's, it's a second world. Look at that. I think an even cooler thing would be to like, maybe honestly, we could get like something from the toolbox. Like maybe I can get like some, I don't know, some house or something. Let's see. Okay, so after a bit of uh, terminal usage and a bit of tweaking to the actual script, I've made an invisible house, okay? Which, when VR is toggled, hopefully will become visible. There we go, look at that. How cool is that? Like, I've said it before, but this honestly shows so much, like, this has so much potential for just games and, I don't know, just anything in general, honestly. Like, look, look at how cool this, look at how nice this is, bro. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I hope you can understand that I'm a bit of a, at a loss of words here. Like, I know this isn't anything too special, yeah, but like, you know, like, this is cool. I don't know. And the fact that we can even do this inside of Roblox, you know, like, like you'd expect something like this from like, I don't know, Unreal Engine 5 or Unity, but like, I don't know, like, the fact that Roblox can do this is pretty cool. And again, th none of this is that complicated. We're just changing, like, the visibility of things. That's literally all we're doing, right? But we're just doing it in such a way that makes it, I don't know, very, um, what's the word? Interactive, I guess. So yeah, I think that is honestly quite cool. And what I'm thinking right now is honestly, we could make this into, like, some sort of obby. A few moments later. Yeah, so I just made a quick mock-up obby, right? And like, look at this, right? We have parts, right? Which one, two, three, four. And then when I switch to VR, now they're different. And now we have a house. And you can also see like the shadow switching. That is, that is so cool. Yeah, and so as you can see, this obby can only be, you know, actually done if you use the VR properly. So let me actually see if I can even do this, right? So... <laughs> You have to, like, quickly toggle it. Oh, okay. 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 Okay, and now it's right there. Oh. There we go. Look at that. We've successfully beaten the world's hardest first VR obby, obviously. Yeah, so hopefully you can already, you know, start to think of some potential use cases for this, because I certainly am, right? And honestly, bro, this is what Roblox Studio was made for, okay? It wasn't made for another pet simulator, or, I don't know, some RNG game, or some simulator game, or whatever. It was just meant for stuff like this. I don't know, just cool, innov innovative gameplay, you know? Just fun things in general, because, like, this is fun, okay? But, like, pet simulators are not fun, bro, you know what I mean? So yeah, feel free to absolutely, you know, steal my idea. I'm okay with it. Uh, do join our Discord server, it's in the description. You know, just showcase what you've made if you are going to be making anything. If you're a beginner developer or someone wanting to develop because you've just been so, I don't know, amazed by my teaching style and just everything in this video, which thank you. You could join the server because, you know, there are some helpful people there. But I'll also say that I do have a course on Roblox Studio. It has a free preview, so you don't have to, like, pay anything you know, unless you want like the full six and a half hour course, right? But basically, it's a Roblox Studio course, be beginner to expert, blah, blah, blah. You can find it linked in the description. 
and a pinned comment. And as always, we are back to basics. Thank you for watching.